Hi, welcome to Research Methods Catch Up. This initial session is going to be an overview about hypotheses. So what we're going to be covering in this session is distinguishing between an aim and a hypothesis, because they are different and you do need to know what the difference is. I'm going to take a look at the types of hypothesis and some terminology that you're going to need. Now, here's the specification. The specification is very, very important, obviously. So what the specification says is aims, stating the difference between aims and hypotheses. And then we've got hypothesis directional and non-directional. Now, just a little bit of an exam hint here. Hypotheses and questions about hypotheses are really important in their own right as part of research methods, but understanding hypotheses is crucial to your understanding of the topic of inferential statistics. So a very, very good starting point there for us. Let's begin then in terms of what you already know. So what do you know about an aim in a piece of research in terms of what's the point of it? What might it look like? What do you know about a hypothesis? What is it? What are the types of it? What's the difference between them? So anything that you might know can go in the space in your booklet there next to question one. So pause the video for now. We'll start with the aim. So the aim is basically the aim of an investigation. So the idea is you've got some kind of theory and you're going to use an aim to basically state your intention about what you're going to look at. Now, a really good phrase if you're asked to construct an aim in the exam to use is the phrase to investigate. So we've got to investigate the effect of misleading information on the accuracy of eyewitness testimony. So you can very see clearly here in this aim, this isn't a statement about what I expect to find. It's a statement about what I'm going to be looking at. And then we've got the hypothesis. Now, the hypothesis makes a prediction. So it makes a prediction about what the research is going to be. So in the context of an experiment, it might make specific reference to the IV and the DV in a piece of research. If it's a hypothesis used in the context of correlational research that we'll talk about in a later session, it's going to make a prediction in terms of what's going to happen with the co-variables. So we've got an example here. Participants who engage in post-events discussion after an incident will recall information less accurately than participants who do not engage in post-event discussion. So you see, this isn't what I'm going to look at. This is a prediction about the outcome of my piece of research and that's the crucial difference between an aim and hypothesis is do they make a prediction a hypothesis makes a prediction about the outcome whereas an aim just states essentially what you're going to be looking at with no prediction so we're going to talk about hypotheses in this session in the context of experimental hypotheses. We're going to use the term directional and non-directional. I'll just flag up, though, that the terms directional and non-directional do also apply to correlational hypothesis that we'll be looking at in a later session. So the experimental hypothesis. So we might have a directional hypothesis. Now, if we have a directional hypothesis, we're going to specifically talk about in our prediction what the direction of our results is likely going to be. Now, if I'm using a directional hypothesis in a piece of research, it's usually because there's past peer-reviewed research in this area that indicates what the direction of results is likely to be. You might also see the term a one-tailed hypothesis, especially if you're on the inferential statistics unit. One-tailed means exactly the same as directional. Here's a couple of examples of directional hypotheses. Participants who have less than five hours sleep a night will score lower on a memory test than those who sleep more than five hours a night. Participants who consume five units of alcohol or more a week will react slower on a simulated driving hazard test than those who consume less than five units of alcohol per week. So you might be able to spot in the directional hypothesis the use of words, for example, react slower, less than. All of these terms indicate the direction of my results. 
Then we've got the non-directional hypothesis. A non-directional hypothesis is still a hypothesis, so it still makes a prediction. It makes a prediction that there will be a difference. So two or more variables that you've got, there's going to be a difference, but I'm not going to state what specifically that difference will be. Now, a non-directional hypothesis is often used when maybe there isn't published research in a particular area or the research is inconclusive in terms of its outcome. A non-tailed hypothesis in the inferential statistics unit is going to be referred to as a two-tailed hypothesis. Let's take a look at some examples. Participants who have less than five hours sleep a night will perform differently on a memory test than those who sleep more than five hours a night. So you see, I am making a prediction because I'm saying there's going to be a difference in their performance, but I haven't specified what that difference will be in terms of will they do better than or worse than. Then we've got participants who consume five units of alcohol or more a week will react differently on a simulated driving hazard test than those who consume less than five units of alcohol a week. Again, we've got that word differently in there. Another way to structure them is to start the hypothesis by saying there will be a difference. But again, not specifying specifically what that difference will be. Right, so just to summarise, directional hypothesis specifies the direction of difference. Non-directional hypothesis states a difference but doesn't specify the direction of difference. You use a directional hypothesis when this past peer-reviewed research in an area towards one direction. You use a non-directional maybe when the research is inconclusive or it's a new area of research. Directional hypothesis we call a one-tailed because we're specifying one outcome, whereas a non-directional is two-tailed because there's two potential outcomes, more than, less than. Another term related to hypotheses, a type of hypothesis that you're going to have to know is a null hypothesis. Now, the reason that you need to know about a null hypothesis, although it isn't explicitly named on the spec, is because it's very important for your understanding, again, of inferential statistics. Remember, one of the things I said at the start of this session is you can't go into stats without knowing about hypotheses. So what's a null hypothesis? It's basically saying that nothing will be found. So we've got, there will be no significant difference in motivation questionnaire scores between athletes who train with and without a training partner. Now, in terms of constructing an all hypothesis, it's pretty straightforward, because if you look at the example there, it says there will be no significant difference. If that was phrased slightly different as there will be a significant difference, that would be a non-directional hypothesis. So a good way to write a null is to write a non-directional that states there will be a difference and just put there won't, there will be no difference. Okay, so like I said, just to kind of summarise, really important there just to know the distinction between those types of hypotheses. So in a piece of research, I'm going to have either, you can't have both, you don't be too greedy, a non-experimental or a directional hypothesis. I will also always have a null hypothesis because when it comes to stats, that's what I'm going to be testing. OK, I hope that was a useful overview for you. You can join us in the next session for more on hypotheses.